Until now, we've only been working with a single builder. But as I mentioned in a previous video, Packer allows us to specify as many builders as we'd like. And what this allows us to do is we can create a custom image of any kind, right? So for example, uh, you know, we created that Ubuntu image with Nginx. We can create that image and have an identical unified image across multiple cloud providers. So if we wanted to create that same image on Azure, as well as AWS, as well as GCP, as well as a VMware image, um, we can do all of that by just adding in a few extra builders for each one of the different um, providers. And so what we're going to do for this project is we're going to create this exact image uh, that we created in project four. That's that Ubuntu Nginx image, but we're going to create it on AWS as well as Azure. So we're going to get a chance to learn how, it, how to work with multiple builders and how to work specifically with the Azure RM builder. So let's head on over to the documentation and take a look at how we can configure the Azure builder. Uh, so let's go under builders and this time let's go under Azure. Let's start off with the overview section. Uh, so obviously the first thing that we're going to have to do is uh, specify the authentication. And just like, as I said, um, with AWS, right, there's obviously multiple different ways that we can authenticate. And I'm just going to hard code our credentials onto our configs just for simplicity's sake. But once again, um, you know, there is uh, more secure ways of doing this and I will cover those in a later video. Um, but the few things that we have to pass in are the subscription ID, the client ID, as well as the client secret. So we're going to have to head on over to the Azure um, portal and I'll show you guys how to do that. All right. So under the Azure portal, there's going to be uh, quite a few steps for Azure. It's not going to be quite as simple as it was with AWS. So under uh, the search box, I want you to search for um, uh, Active Directory. And under Active Directory, we want to uh, select App Registration. So we're going to create an app. Uh, we're going to select New App. You can see I have one right here. You probably won't have any. So we'll do New Registration, and I'm going to call this Packer uh, Demo. And leave everything else as default and hit Register. All right, so here already we can get the Client ID, which is right here. Uh, and um, to get the Secret Identity, or the secret key, we have to go back to the certificates and secrets menu and select new client secret. And then just, you know, give this a description. So I don't know, test, it doesn't really matter. And select an expiration date. So I'm just gonna do one year, so we'll add that. And then this is our secret key, so we can copy this. And let's copy those two files to our document right now before we lose them. Uh, so under builders, we're gonna put a comma and then we're gonna specify the new Azure builder. And here uh, we're gonna do uh, type and this is going to be Azure-RM. Uh, then we have the client secret that we just copied. And let's go back to the portal and let's get that client ID. So the client ID is going to be in the overview page. All right, the next thing that we have to do is get our uh, subscription ID. All right, so let's uh, go back to the home page and select subscriptions or search for it. And so, you know, everything's going to get added to your default subscription. Or if you put it on a different subscription, then just find that one. I'm going to click on this, and then this is going to be our subscription ID. All right, so now the next thing that we have to do is we have to give our app permission to be able to, you know, create and, and destroy virtual machines as well as uh, create images. So we need to make sure that this app, which is what Packer is going to use to essentially, you know, connect to our Azure account and perform certain actions. So here under subscriptions, we want to go under um, access control. And we want to add a role assignment. So here we'll select a role, and I'm just going to select owner. Okay, I think we can leave that um, as the default and then search for your app. So what do we, I call this Packer Demo? If I search for Packer, we can see that. So I'm going to select Packer Demo and then hit Save. 
So now I assigned the owner role to the Packer demo app. So now he can create and destroy whatever he wants. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a resource group where we're going to store um, all of our uh, images that we create. Uh, so if you've already got a resource group, go ahead and just use that. Uh, if you don't have one, I'll walk you through creating one. And so I'm going to call this resource group uh, Packer-RG. And I'm going to specify the US East region because that's my default one. Feel free to use a different one. And so now we've got the resource group in place. And I think that should be all that we have to do when it comes to the Azure portal. So let's go back to the documentation and let's take a look at what other values that we got to pass into our configs. So if we go under Azure ARM, uh, we've got our authentication in place. So uh, we've got, you know, type, well, we've got the type, we've got the client uh, secret ID and subscription ID. So that should be all that we need. Uh, now let's go under, uh, let's see what other uh, options that we got to pass in. So now we have to specify the base image that we're going to uh, create our custom image from, right? So this would be uh, the equivalent of getting uh, an AMI of an Ubuntu image on AWS, but it's a little bit more difficult um, with Azure. We got to run a couple of commands and, uh, you know, these commands will allow you to kind of filter and find out what image you want to use, but you will need to install the Azure CLI. All right, so if we go to the documentation for the Azure CLI, you can go to this page and just select um, uh, under the install section, you'll see that it's going to provide you instructions on how to install it across all, all operating systems. It's very simple. Um, it does everything for you. So just um, get that done. And then once you get that finished, uh, we can go back to the documentation and figure out uh, where um, or how to specify using an Ubuntu 18.0.4 image. All right, so I'm going to copy this command right here. And so we can run this on our terminal after we get the Azure CLI installed. Uh, I'm not going to use West US. I'm going to use East US, but we'll open up a new terminal. Do East US. And this is going to list out all of the publishers um, in the Azure marketplace. So you can see um, all the different uh, publishers like Yellowfin and so on. Uh, now, I already know which one we need to use. It's going to be, uh, con what is it, canonical? I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but uh, we can do, uh, it's going to be this one right here. So that's going to be the publisher. And then we can get the different offers from this publisher by running this command right here. And once again, I'm going to change this to East US. All right, and so you can see the different versions uh, uh, of Ubuntu that they have. We want Ubuntu server right here, uh, just like in the example. And then so lastly, we can run this last command to see the specific version that we want. And once again, I'm going to change the location to east. Okay, and so now it's going to spit out all of the different uh, versions. So if we scroll up, um, you can see they got the 1904 images, 1910 daily, and we want to look for 1804. Uh, so this is LTS Gen 2, but we just want 1804 LTS. So if we just keep going up, there we go. So this is the one we want. So this is going to be the uh, SKU. Uh, we know that this is the publisher and this is the offer. Uh, so with those details in mind, we can now pass in uh, image publisher, image offer, and image SKU. All right, so now that we've got that done, uh, let's keep scrolling down and let's see what other values we got to pass in. Uh, so let's pass in the location. So we can pass in the location. And what's going to happen is that uh, Packer can do th two things. It can create a image, or sorry, a resource group on the fly for creating the VM so that I can actually extract an image from it. Or you could specify a resource group. So I'm going to allow uh, Packer to do that automatically for us. And for it to do that, we have to pass in the location property. 
However, if you didn't want to do that, you can actually uh, pass in a specific resource group and then it'll use that one. So here we're going to do locate, I'm going to move that down a bit, the location. And this is going to be East US. And we will also have to pass in the OS type. So if you uh, just do a control F and search for OS underscore type, it's going to explain um, why we need that. So we're going to be creating an Ubuntu image, which is Linux. So we have to pass in a value of Linux. And lastly, there's going to be two more properties that we have to pass in. Uh, so the next one is going to be managed image name. So this is going to be the image name that it's going to be stored as on Azure. So we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to call this Ubuntu uh, dash engine x dash project five. And I'm actually going to use the same exact name for the AMI under the AWS builder as well. And then we have to also specify a resource group onto where we want to store that image. And we already created a resource group in the last section. Uh, and so if I hit refresh here, I'm going to use this resource group, packer-rg. So you can see that there's, there's a lot of resource groups at play. So it's kind of hard to kind of keep track of which resource group is used for what. Um, but this resource group that I'm talking about right here is just to store the image. Um, the other resource group that I mentioned is for when Packer actually goes in to create a virtual machine. It can use a different resource group. We could technically use the same one as well, but I'm going to let it automatically create one uh, for that purpose. Okay, so we've got Packer-RG. Let me just make sure it's not capitalized. Okay. And I think that should be about it. Uh, so um, at this point, if we run Packer build, it should create an identical image across AWS as well as Azure. And actually, before I do that, um, I actually want to store all of this config. Uh, inside a new project so that you know you guys can see the difference in e between each one of these. So I'm going to copy this folder and paste that. And we're just going to rename him Project 5. And I also want to, uh, inside Project 4, make sure I go back to the original config so that you guys don't lose that. And this should have been Project 4. All right, so let's save that. And then let's go to Project 5. And here we should be good to go. So let's open up our terminal and uh, navigate to project five. And let's do a packer build example dot JSON. All right, so it looks like it's finished. Um, let's just verify that the image got created on both Azure as well as AWS. And so in Azure, let's just go to virtual machines and let's try to create a new virtual machine. We want to actually deploy it, but let's just see if we can uh, find the image. All right, so now if we select browse all public and private images, and then if we go to my items, uh, we should see that we now have Ubuntu Nginx Project 5. So that clearly worked. And then if we go to AWS, hit refresh on this page, we should then see Ubuntu Nginx Project 5. So there you go, guys. That's how we can utilize multiple builders in a Packer build so that we can create a unified image across multiple cloud providers. When you have a Packer config with multiple builders, there may be a scenario where you may only want to run one or a couple of the builders and not all of them all at once. And Packer gives you a CLI flag to do that. And you can pass in the dash only flag and then specify all of the builders that you want so that you don't have to run all of them at once if you don't want. So here we can do a packer build dash only equals and then the name of your builder. So we can do Amazon dash EBS. And so if we run this uh, with our example.json file, this is going to only run the Amazon dash EBS. 
um, builder. And if we wanted to, we could also add in, you know, the uh, Azure. Whoops, looks like I'm inserting by accident. The Azure, uh, the Azure builder as well. So you could specify as many builders as you want. Keep that in mind. Uh, but if we just run it with this and then do example.json, uh, you'll see that it'll run and it'll only run for the uh, Amazon EBS. But I'm going to cancel that for now. 